Happy Friday. I'm Kaui Lucas here on Hawaii is my mainland every Friday at 3 p.m. Think Tech Hawaii. This week I have a, a live guest. I have Jeff Ha from Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii who does the Waste Diversion program. And we have live via Skype, John Kellett from uh, Clearwater Mills in Baltimore, Maryland. John is the inventor of an amazing piece of machinery called a water wheel. No, it's trash a trash wheel. wheel. Yeah. Um, it's a water wheel that moves trash, that takes trash. Mm -hmm. And Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii, along with Surfrider Foundation Oahu and 808 Cleanups have just completed a crowdfunder to raise the money to bring John to Honolulu and do a feasibility study. That has just happened this week. And you guys did an awesome job. Let's show your video. Sure. The Alawai Canal represents the main source of ocean pollution entering the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii. This is our opportunity to do something about it. The trash water wheel represents a tangible working solution to diverting trash from entering the ocean. Since 2014, the Baltimore Trash Water Wheel has removed 420,000 single-use plastic water bottles. It's removed 320,000 styrofoam containers, and it's removed 7.5 million cigarette butts. Not only will the Trash Water Wheel remove hundreds of tons of debris annually, it will provide a visible tool that can inspire us to reduce our use of the trash causing materials that we consume on a daily basis. Before we can bring the trash water wheel to Honolulu, an official feasibility study must be conducted before we can move forward to the next steps. So now comes the fun part. We need your help to fund this feasibility study. Please go to our Indiegogo campaign right below, donate a dollar, or heck, please go ahead and just donate the whole thing. With your support, we can keep the Alawai clean so that it's not emptying out hundreds of tons of debris into the Pacific Ocean. Do it for clean beaches. Do it for a clean ocean. Do it for our future. Under the sun, my friends, we are the ones here. We are the ones. Jeff, that looks like that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, so a lot of that footage came from our last uh, beach cleanup, which was kind of the Waikiki to uh, the Alawai Harbor. Um, so yeah, it, it was good. good. Good good cleanup, good turnout. A lot of fun was had. And you guys do that sort of thing pretty regularly? Yeah, we host four large-scale cleanups annually, um, three here on Oahu and then one on an outer island. Awesome. So the the this joint venture is now ready to go. Um, what do you what do you have in planned for for John coming here? Um, so yeah, like you mentioned, John's going to be coming to do a feasibility study. Um, what some that entails is going to be um, looking at the site of where the the trash water wheel is proposed to go, assessing that site. Um, also assessing the trash and you know debris that we're dealing with, the amounts, what types, things like that, um, as well as kind of dealing with uh, permitting and fees and things of that nature, um, communicating with the city, 
uh, kind of just looking at gig, attaining a, a nutshell of what it's going to take to make this project happen, um, you know, from the physical to the, you know, the, the paperwork and things like that. Can you tell me what support you have from, from the city so far? Um, yeah, the city's been really uh, good to work with on this project. They've been very receptive to it. Um, the city and county has pledged, I, I believe it's around 350000 or so, Excellent. which is roughly about half of what it would take to make it happen. I, you know, we'll know a bit more once a feasibility study is done, but um, that's, that's, that's huge. Yeah, it's a very, like I said, generous thing. Yeah. And John, John, are you there? I am. Hi, John. So h how did you start this whole thing with a solar-powered water wheel that mo removes trash? What, what's the story? Well, I started this because, because I worked on Baltimore Harbor for 20 years, and we have a problem very similar to what uh, Hawaii has in the Alawai Canal. And that is trash and debris is coming into our beautiful harbor and making a mess of it. And I watched this happen for the 20 years on the harbor, and I, ha I decided we had to do something about it. So I went to the city and I said, we need to, to make sure that trash is an impression that people have of our harbor. And they said, we're open to what it is. And after thinking about it every day, I'm going to work. This is the idea I can. So now um, you were wise enough to make it incredibly practical in his, its design. Um, can you c kind of go over in a, in a nutshell how it works? We have the footage from the storm. We can show that later. But can you, can you talk about how, as a practical matter, how easy is it for you to run? How many people does it take? How much? energy what what do we what are we what are we embracing here well the, the machine is actually very simple the um sits at the mouth of the river or in the case of hawaii it would see the canal and we let the trash come to us because it's the rainfall that pushes the trash down from the streets the parking lots and anywhere it is on the end and washes it down into the into the river eventually out into the ocean and makes causes problems all along the way. So what we do is intercept the trash before it gets out to the harbor and eventually into the ocean. And the way we do that is we have containment booms that funnel the trash to the machine. The water wheel turns with the flow of the water. If there's not enough flow of the water. We supplement that with solar powered pumps that pump water in up into the buckets of the water wheel. And the turning of the water wheel provides power for rakes that break the trash up to the conveyor. And then the conveyor to lift the trash from the water and dump it into a dumpster. The dumpster is a separate floating barge. And it's full. We push it to a transfer facility. In our case, it's a boat ramp. We push it to the boat ramp. The truck drives down the ramp, takes the full dumpster away, gives us an empty dumpster and we back to be filled up again. We have two two dumpster barges and the dumpster barge when one's full, we bring the empty out, pull the full one out, push the one in to be filled up while changing the other one. So it's a very simple machine and it's been extremely well for the last two years here more collecting four hundred and fifty tons so of trash. Is this something that's running all the time? It it runs most of the time, it is uh, weak, you know, the, but there's not enough to turn the wheel on the solar pumps. And we can control those pumps from our phones. We have an interconnection on the machine, and we have up to eight pumps. And if there's a lot of trash, we'll turn on all eight. A lot of the time, just hang on one, just so people can see it working, if there's not trash there. I'm, I'm, I'm having a little t uh, trouble hearing you at times, so if I say something funny, it's because I didn't hear you quite right. Um, did you say how long it takes for you to, to swap out the, the barges? And I don't think so, right? You didn't, how, how hard is that? Well, it doesn't take long at all, because we just, we just bring an empty dumpster out and we just slide the new one in. Now, the, wow. 
takes a while is that our boat ramp three miles away, so we have to push the dumpster to the boat ramp. But if it's closer, it can be much quicker. We probably won't have that problem here, do you think? Um, that's, yeah, I mean, being right near the, the Alawai, um, you know, we've got a lot of access there, but that's something that we, I think we're going to be looking at in the feasibility study is, is what the logistics are of actually removing the trash from the water wheel. Um, and we've talked about a few different ideas, but as to how it's exactly going to work yet, uh, nothing's, nothing's concrete, if you will. Okay, and, and back to you, John. Talk about the, the education. I, I understand that there's, there's been a significant, um, that's a significant component of, of what's happening now. How does that work? Absolutely. I think almost as important as picking up the trash is generating awareness that, the, that this trash is causing a huge problem and that everyone can be a part of the solution by not putting your trash, you know, by disposing of your trash properly, you can prevent it from going into the harbor by recycling, by, by making sure that your trash cans are secured and doing everything it takes to make sure that your trash doesn't end up in the water. Do you have any way of measuring the impact of that education? Uh, over time, I hope we do. Um, one of the nice things about the water field is we do keep very accurate uh, analysis of the composition of what's coming down the road. For instance, we, we do sampling and we're able to get a good estimate of how many cigarette butts, how many plastic butts, how many styrofoam, how many plastic bags we're picking up. All right, and John, that, go ahead, throw some numbers at us if you know them. Let, let us know what kind well, of we, numbers you got. We picked up over 7 million cigarette butts, 7.5 million, <laughs> I believe. And uh, wow. half a million plastic bottles and and um, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of thousands of styrofoam cups. I don't have all the numbers off the top of my head, but they're, they're pretty staggering. Um, and how fast can it accumulate? Um, how fast can you fill up one of your dumpsters? I think I, I heard they were 15 cubic feet. Is that right? 15 cubic yards. Yards. And they hold just, just five tons each one. And we've had filled them as fast as an hour and a half. And, but that just depends on how the rain is coming and how, how fast the trash is coming. So we filled as many as 12 in one day, but we've also had to sit there for two weeks without being because we had it rain. With any rain, we don't see the trash coming down the river. Okay. Well, you know, John, I think um, now is probably a good time for us to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to show the video of your. Um, big stormwater event and people can see this uh, the wheel in action and then we'll talk some more about it. Sounds great. All right, see you soon. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at two o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you. What the science really means to your life, its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Likeable Science. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas here every Friday. Today I have two guests. One is Jeff Haas from Sustainable Coastline Hawaii who does their waste diversion program. And the other one we have via Skype, John Kellett from Clearwater Mills who has invented and fabricated and will be coming to Hawaii soon to 
try out their solar water wheel that moves trash out of the floating trash. This doesn't take care of all of our problems, but it sure takes care of, of a lot of the yuck that yeah. we see. And, and maybe, Jeff, you can talk a little about the, the floating trash problem versus other trash, and then we'll go see how this water wheel works. Sure, yeah. Um, I think what we're experiencing here is a lot like what John had and continues to have, you know, the problems in Baltimore. Um, it's, it's just a lot of everyday trash, plastic bottles, uh, styrofoam containers, plastic bags, cigarette butts, you know, things that float. That's one of the main, um, you know, the, one of the main things of, you know, sources of or items of trash that we're finding in the Alawai, and the Alawai is actually the main source of um, pollution into the Pacific from Hawaii. And so, you know, we're looking at just getting a lot of that, you know, that, that rubbish that is flowing down, um, mostly when it rains, you know, it's pushed into the storm drains out into the LOI. Uh, we're looking and gathering as much of that as we can before it actually gets out into the currents and takes off. So um, as far as, you know, things, there isn't a, is a ton of trash that's floating underneath the surface per se. You know, if it's underneath the surface, usually it's sunk. Um, it's not going to be able to address things like, you know, chemical pollutants and or stuff like that. Bacteria and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, it's it's going to, you know, so it's not the solution. Um, it's just, it's a small part of, you know, a spoke in the wheel, if you will. Seems like a pretty, pretty spectacular spoke, though. Let's see the video of your um, baby in action. So here we are on the Jones Falls in uh, Baltimore's Inner Harbor on a rainy day standing on the water wheel and uh, which is behind me here you can see this is the water wheel it's being turned by the current of the Jones Falls which is flowing very rapidly because we just had a pretty large rainstorm and that wheel is turning this conveyor belt that is picking up all of this trash that is flowing down the Jones Falls and you can see we've got a lot of plastic bottles we've got a lot of styrofoam cups a lot of just kind of random pieces of styrofoam and I believe the water wheel has just accumulated its first tire. Uh, so as you can see it moves kind of slowly but slow and steady uh, in this case is just fine. Um, and we are picking up all of this trash. Carries it to the dumpster. Which we can, I can run around and show you that. This is the dumpster barge. It's in the back of the water wheel. And we can see it's already picked up a lot of debris already. Some very large logs coming down the Jones Falls, but you know, an amazing amount of plastic bottles and styrofoam cups and cigarette butts too. And you can watch as it kind of dramatically sneaks its way over the lip there. Big logs coming. I want to wait to see that tire come in here. Careful of the log. Stand back a little, I suppose. Maybe off to the side, even. John, how how um how full was this dumpster when the storm started? Empty. It was empty. So this is all just from the storm that cut pretty much started. Do you know when it started? It, started, it didn't start until about 7 a.m. actually. So it was just since 7 a.m. and it's probably about 9:30 or so now. And uh, we filled up our dumpster with trash. It's an incredible device. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I cannot wait to see that here, really. Uh, so we're, our trash, um, I, I, I don't know if we'll have those big logs floating down, but um, we'll, we, we, we'll be definitely be able to fill it up. Um, how, how many people does it take to run this thing? How, how much of an effort is it? Well, it doesn't take very much, much manpower. It's, um, again, depending on the rain. Most days we don't, we're not doing anything. There. 
we're just uh, letting it run and monitoring our phones. Um, when it rains, hard rains out there to change the dumpsters every hour and a half or so, and sometimes those big logs do need a little guiding to the conveyor. And sometimes there's a raft that forms that needs to be kind of broken up the way. But overall, it doesn't take a huge amount of man. The machine does the work for us. And um, the, uh, you know, we just keep an eye on it all the time. We also monitor it to uh, sample what's coming down the river. We'll sample how many styrofoam, so many plastic bottles are in the battle. That way we can keep a good record of what we're picking. So do you do, uh, do you switch, um, do you sort the trash? Um, you were talking here, uh, Jeff, about when you guys have cleanups, you're able to sort the trash and, mm -hmm. and recycle the recyclables. Do you do that also in Maryland? No, we're not, we don't recycle the trash. There's, um, we have a ch challenge that a lot of this is um, basically a hazardous material in, in sewage, oil. We have hypothetical and all nice stuff we have to pick through but there there is the opportunity to recycle and in fact we've sent a lot of our trash to Germany where they're trying to figure out methods of BMW um, auto company is working on figure out how to trash into our parts so we're working but right now the, the trash goes waste to energy facility where it's turned into energy which is not as great as something, but it's uh, better than the ocean. Uh, are there any other trash wheels out in the world besides yours in, in Baltimore? We're right now a second trash wheel for Baltimore. Also, work. I just got back from Panama, and it looks like we're doing water wheels. Uh, this is not a problem that's unique to Baltimore or Hawaii. It's a worldwide pro problem. It's, um, and, and like Jeff said, it's not the solution. It's just something that helps us control it and so we can come up with the ultimate solution, which is to keep it from getting the other ways to be done. It's a, it's a good method of finding what's coming down the river and a good method of making sure it doesn't end up out where it causes all kinds of problems. So, water wheels are going to be the savior to the ocean, but it's going to help us reach the goal of making sure that our trash doesn't kill our oceans. Okay, so we're looking at um, one of the slides of the from your PowerPoint, and um, I'm going to go ahead and put those up on my blog, kawilukas.com, when I um, uh, post the, um, the video of our, our chat today. So that'll be available for everybody to look at. So, Jeff, have, have the plans come far enough to know how we're going to handle the trash, or are we just really at the, at the beginning? Um, somewhat at the beginning. The plans right now are, are a lot along those lines. You know, I don't know that we're going to go as far as sorting it. Kind of similar things, you know, the, the alawai, some of that water is, is it's a little bit um, questionable if you want to be digging around in that trash. Um, so, you know, right now, initially, it's probably going to go the route of most of trash, which is to age power um, and incinerate and turn into power for the island. Um, we, you know, and our plans is to kind of log the trash, um, keep track of, you know, what numbers and stuff like that. I don't think that's going to involve sorting through every single piece of trash and, you know, taking a tally. But we're going to establish a system so we can kind of have those numbers, so we can start to get an idea of, um, you know, what types of pollution we're, we're dealing with and use that really largely as an education for, uh, you know, an education tool. So when people come to visit the water, we, we can say, hey, we're pulling, you know, X amount of um, single-use plastic water bottles out of here and, and styrofoam, you know, food containers, things like that. So hopefully it'll turn that light on in people's head that, oh, I use that every day. And, man, you know, that's going into the yard. Like, it just, you know, that's that's the ultimate goal is to try to raise the awareness and get people to think and change their you know consumption habits and things like that for a little bit more responsible 
uh, you know, approach to it. So the, one of the things I loved was the invention of this character, the Mr. Trash Wheel um, <laughs> that they, they did in Baltimore yeah. um, with, the, with the big yeah. eyes and yeah. they make it look like a shell and it's really cute. Do we have, do we have somebody working on a, a personality for the Honolulu Trash Wheel? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I can say we have some very, very creative um, people at Sustainable Cosigns, at Surfrider, at 808 Cleanups. There's a lot of really, you know, clever mind, so I, I can guarantee you it'll take on a personality, but we might have to get to know it first before we get that far. <laughs> okay, so the, um, the timeline, um, you've got the money now as of this week, and again, congratulations. Yes, I think it was you. less than two weeks for you to yeah, raise that money. Seven, six or seven days is yeah. really quick, which is, you know, that's a reflection of the community and how, you know, they want, you know, how they're getting behind this project, how, you know, that's... It's, so that's the approval right there, I think, by the, you know, our captive audience. So in our last two minutes, okay, so there's, we've got 350,000. Uh, we have enough to bring John here for the feasibility stuff. Then we have the half of the, the actual project costs, but that the, re the other half, the other 350,000, and that's going to have to be privately Yeah, we're going to look at a, you know, a combination of partnerships, donors, um, probably do, a, you know, another a crowdfunding campaign as well, um, you know, kind of a continuation. Um, so once we actually get to the fundraising, you know, it'll be a combination of those three sources. Okay, so that sounds like a really big project. I'm so glad that you have these really strong partners um, mm -hmm. with yes, uh, Surfrider Foundation and 808 Cleanups. Um, what what they've done in, in, in Baltimore really, um, John, is, is just terrific. Maybe you can just tell us maybe one of your, your favorite stories of, of, of what the trash wheel has done. We only have a minute, but go for it. Well... One time, we, I was watching the video and actually we saw a um, somebody's pet python had gotten washed down the river and climbed up and come up the conveyor and climbed up onto the deck. And I, I saw it on the video and I said, I said to my um, FDA who works with me, I said, I think we got a snake on the deck. And uh, it was late at night. He said, we'll go down and look in the morning. In the morning, he goes down and finds python curled up on the solar charge panel, which is a warmest place on deck, and uh, called the National Aquarium to come rescue this um, non-native species. <laughs> thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you here in Honolulu. And thank you, Jeff, for joining us today. There's lots more for this story. Thanks for having me on the show.